there, Mom and Dad. Oops, this is bouncing on my... <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm here to read you tomorrow's blog. Well, actually, it'll be today's blog when you read it. Maybe it'll be yesterday's blog because who knows when they will read it to you. But anyway, here's the picture. Okay. And the title of this blog is... Former Planned Parenthood Abortion Manager Starts a Revival for Life. Good title, huh? <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. This is a story I have wanted to write for a long time. A few months ago, I was connected with Crystal Eldridge, the former manager of the Winston-Salem Planned Parenthood. She is a Christian who was consumed by guilt over her work there and wanted out. Cities for Life has been active in helping Crystal for several months and had the privilege of being the point person in that endeavor. First, we helped her in recommitting her life to God and then in finding new work and being able to handle the financial struggle till she found a new job. Over the months, I have come to know and love Crystal, and have been awed by her courage. Planned Parenthood was desperate to have her back and offered her far more money than she could make in any other job in her small town. Uh-oh, I lost my place. However, Crystal was firm in her renewed commitment to God. She would not dishonor him or ever challenge his authority in her life again. She refused to return. A whole network of people have been praying for her and helping her behind the scenes. We cheered her on with joy and praised to God when she landed her new job. Eager to now change the world of abortion that she had so recently been trapped in, Crystal was determined to help in any way God led her. She sent pregnant women who made a choice for life our way so we could encourage and help them. And she began reaching out to her friends inside the abortion industry. She urged them to leave. She told them if she could do it, so could they. If there are no abortion workers, there would be no abortions. She referred them to Abby Johnson's ministry, and then there were none, who would help them leave the abortion work. Yesterday, I texted her to invite her to a wonderful event taking place December 2nd in Charlotte. Our partner ministry, Love Life Charlotte, does 40 weeks of prayer walks. Each Saturday around the street, the abortion clinic is on, a march for life for each week of pregnancy. December 2nd is week 40. Crystal said she would be overjoyed to join us and then told me she had great news. This is her text to me. I've been talking to the girls that worked with me at the Planned Parenthood in Winston-Salem. Three of them did a walkout yesterday during the abortion clinic. They shut down the center yesterday due to lack of staff. There are only two people plus the doctor employed there. You can't do abortions with only two people. I am trying my hardest to help close the place. One person can make a difference, folks. Crystal let God reach her tormented conscience and change her. She recognized she could not pretend to follow God and work in an industry that slaughtered innocent human babies as she cleaned up after the bloody aftermath of an abortion. She told me it was like a murder scene which I realized, in fact, it was. She told me her love of God and life was rekindled, and despite the struggles, her conviction remained solid. She would now work to end abortion. Have you ever felt trapped in a situation you knew was wrong, but you saw no way to extricate yourself? Or have you felt that your meager contribution to an overwhelming, pervasive problem like abortion could never be worth the effort? Come to the prayer walk Saturday, December 2nd. 
Talk to Crystal Eldridge. My guess is you will change your mind. For nothing will be impossible with God. Luke 1, 37. Okay, Mom and Dad, love you. Hope you were inspired.